In Warhammer 40,000, the color of your miniatures actually does matter. And I had a weird thought about this lately. Does anybody remember high school biology class and the taxonomic rank of organisms? Kingdom, phylum, order, class, family, genus, species. I don't remember what any of that means because it's been a long time since high school, but I think hobby creativity actually follows a very similar rubric. Universe, faction, culture, army, warband, the models at your house right now. And I think leaning on the existing lore and forcing yourself to work within the rules actually leads to better painting outcomes and paradoxically, more creativity. Now this is an orc, he's already pretty cool, but what could I do to make him even cooler? I could do anything in the world, but I could also look into the lore to help me make these decisions because this is a goth. No orc is just an orc. Looking at the clan cultures, this is a goth, the most brutal and fighty orc. And so I can use that to inspire my painting. On this goth, I wanna try laying down my zenithal highlight with sponging. The goths wear black and I want the fightiness to show through in a messy, scratchy base coat. I mixed up dark gray and put a piece of sponge into my forceps. Tweezers work too, but my fingers get tired keeping them pinched shut. I sponged this all over the orc. This catches on the raised areas and leaves the black in the recesses. I made up a lighter gray and did this over again with the same sponge, but putting down a little bit less paint. Then a lighter gray, applying less of this and targeting certain parts of the model, like his orky skin and weapons. And a final sponging of a very light gray. This achieves the same effect of a zenithal, but instead of a smooth gradient all over the model, it makes for a chaotic, messy pattern, giving the model a lot more energy. I gave all the clothing a wash with null oil. This smooths the sponging a little bit and darkens the clothing down to a nice charcoal gray. Then I took a watery brown paint and glazed this over his belts. His clothing is so dark, I want all the other details to pop on this fella. On his skin, I used a green contrast paint to tint my undercoat. This did the trick, but it's still really dark. I want the skin to jump out, so after that was dry, I moved on to a highlight with some bright green ink. This is a super saturated, transparent color that is really easy to glaze with. I highlighted the skin, going over his face and arms again and again until they were a bright retro green. I mixed some of the light gray into this paint to make an even brighter color that I used sparingly on his face to make his ghoulish face look like it was jumping out of the shadows. Now for some red paint. I darkened this and put it over his tongue and I used pure red on his eyes and mixed it with a little light gray to make a pink, which I used to highlight his tongue and dot his eyes. His crazy orc face is the focal point of this model. The light gray paint came in handy for his teeth and then for some checkering. The goths wear red checkers on their armor, so these were essential. Based with the dark red and highlighted with a bright red and while that was on my brush, I threw it over his stick bombs too. A little bit of silver paint dragged over his knife to make scratches and a little sponging everywhere else made this mean green goth ready for action. Oh yeah, that's a goth right there. Usually black leads to a little bit of boring or dark models, but it works really well for the goths because it lets you get really bright poppy skin and weapons. The goths don't care about anything but fighting, but that's not true of all orc cultures, such as the Bad Moons. For the bad moons, I wanted a cleaner look. Like these are orcs who bathe at least once a year. I zenithal the model and then broke out the contrast paint. Contrast yellow over white is crazy vibrant and it's very transparent, so it lets the zenithal underneath shine through. Brown leather over the pants, black over the belt, boots and armor, and then for the skin. This orc is the opposite of the goth. I want the orc's weapons and gear to be the focal point and his skin and face to be darker. And once all these layers of contrast paint were in place, I threw Agrax Earthshade over everything. The yellow is the focal point of the mini and I want to spend my painting time really making it pop. I sponged on some bright yellow over the weapons to give it some texture and crunch and on the softer parts like the clothing, I glazed bright yellow on these parts to feel softer. The same paint, but two different applications give me two different textures. I sponged silver over his deft gun and metal armor for paint chips and these two layers of sponging added a ton of depth without much effort. His orgy flesh isn't the focal point, but I still thought I could use a little of. I glazed just a little of that green ink I used on the goth to brighten his face and biceps just a little. Then I picked out his eyes and orky teeth. The bad moons are kind of the opposite of the goths, where the goths only want to stab and chop. The bad moons are flashy gits. They want to be seen. They want everybody to see their loot. And speaking of being seen, these probably aren't the normal orcs you're used to seeing, and that is because they are from today's sponsor. Hardcore Miniatures, makers of incredibly cool models. And what sets them apart is their commitment to making truly unique stuff, like retro reimagines, pop culture crossovers, gender swaps, and all things awesome. They have a team of talented 3D designers and concept artists who all work together to bring these exciting concepts to life. Their miniatures have good proportions, characterful sculpts, and expertly sculpted details that make painting a breeze. They have made many amazing concepts like Cubork, Lance, Angry Nessa, and lots, lots more cool things. Hardcore Miniatures now has a Patreon, which is the place to be to get their newest and most exciting models yet. 
This month they have a whole gaggle of orcs including a good selection of boys, vehicle upgrades, and some festive orc characters to bring the true spirit of Orktober to wargamers everywhere. And they have a welcome pack to greet their signups that includes retro orcs, punk dwarves, festive dwarves, and even more. And if you're looking for physical miniatures, Hardcore Minis is having a huge sale on their physical store. The next time you're looking for a new never-before-seen model or that perfect reimagining, give Hardcore Miniatures a try. The Snake Bites are probably an orc clan that even non-orc players have heard of. They're the more primitive tribal orcs. They've kind of had their aesthetic toes stepped on a little bit by the new Beast Snaga boys, but they're still pretty rad. For this snaky boy, I decided to try another style of base coating, wet blending. I don't like base coating with a brush, in fact, I hate it, but wet blending turns it into a game for me, making the model look as good as possible as fast as possible, knowing I can clean it all up later. I set up three colors on my wet palette, green, brown, and white, and started slabbering on thick paint with a big ratty brush. I laid the paint on thick so it would dry slowly, and while it was still wet, I could add more colors and mush them in. Acrylic paint still dries pretty quick, even applied thick like this, so I had to work section by section, but it was really fun mixing the colors on the model, and having the freedom to get a little weird with it, making color transitions and messy highlights. He looked pretty schnazzy already, but a little sloppy and lacking detail. To get that detail back, I made up a mix of Rattling Grime and Speed Paint Medium 50-50 and dunked the whole model. This made all my color transitions smooth and purposeful. And now for some highlighting. The snake bites love bones, so that is where I want to spend my time. I used white paint thinned down to highlight the bones, getting all the way up to pure white. And the skin was fine, but I wanted more sinewy rough skin. So I painted some long line shaped highlights to make them look a little more rugged than your average orc. That lion skull made it tricky to reach the eyes. To finish off these big, brutal orc weapons, I sponged on some silver. With a gray base coat, this silver will trick anyone who sees the model's brain into thinking that all the metal bits are true metal, even though they're mostly opaque colors. The snake bites give a lovely opportunity to paint 40k models like Age of Sigmar models because they sort of are. They really are the fantasy version of the orcs. But the next clan I want to talk about is the Blood Axes, the most hated of the orc clans by other orcs because they exemplify all the things that the orcs hate. They trade with the other species in the galaxy, they use camouflage and subterfuge, and they will commit the ultimate orky sin of retreating from fights they can't win. The Blood Axes are proper military orcs, and one of the trickiest things to do in all of painting is convincing camouflage. The problem is, it does its job. It makes it harder to see details and silhouettes. It's tricky, but if I keep it just to his shirt, it should look right. The Zenithal gave me my highlights and shadows, and now I can lay in some transparent colors to tint. I used this green contrast paint that I've been using for the orc skin and painted it over his shirt. And then for his pants, some thinned down brown paint. Now I was feeling up for the camouflage, I took a brown paint and painted on some brown boogers, making them irregular and horizontal with one another. I made sure to have some of these patterns go underneath the overall straps and off the edge of his sleeve so that they felt natural. After brown, I did the exact same thing with the tan paint, making irregular blobs, having them slightly overlap the brown splotches and then finishing off with black blobs. The green speed paint let the zenithal underneath show through, which gave me enough highlighting that the camouflage looks right. If the green was just a solid opaque color, it would look a little flat. I continued base coating with the black contrast paint over his overalls, boots, and gun. On the gun, I like to force a little extra contrast, painting it with the contrast paint and then painting a stripe of contrast medium over the top, which makes the raised portions of the gun much brighter. Then I highlighted his overalls, which are much easier to highlight than the actual camouflage. I love the look of rattling grime with a sponging of silver. It just makes weapons look so good and is really easy. And speaking of easy, a color I found that works really well on orc skin is Army Painter Gilly Dew. This gives the perfect hot retro orc flesh that I can then push even brighter with bright green ink. His body and gear is so dark that I can get away with bright poppy skin. This contrast gives me a very readable orc. And it just feels a little extra silly to have a more realistically armed and armored orc with the most unnatural neon skin. I picked out his teeth and the little orky glyph on his arm and he was ready to infiltrate his way onto the battlefield. The Blood Axes are the orc commandos and probably the most dangerous orcs because they're actually smart enough to use tactics and they have very good gear, gear that is very often stolen by the Death Skulls, the Steely Orcs. The Death Skulls are, in my opinion, the orkiest orcs. Most things in 40k love fighting more than anything, but stealing and looting is pretty specific to these guys. I dug out an old Terminator shoulder pad for this guy to have stolen, and I have big plans for that banner. 
I zenith all the mini and chose the most retro colors for his orky clothing. Tan contrast paint over his umpire vest, some red-brown over his orky pants and gloves, and black contrast over his boots, and the pole of the banner. I watered down the green contrast paint I've been using for Orky's skin a lot to give him a very bright complexion. I want all the details of his face to pop. I painted the same tan over his banner ornaments and did some highlighting of the tan parts just like the snake bites, getting them nice and bright. On his banner, I decided that it was a stolen banner from the Ultramarines. I painted them Ultramarines blue over the banner and shoulder pads, getting them ready for some decals. While I had the blue out, I painted this onto his Orky skin. The Death Skulls like to paint themselves with a little war paint. Blue tiger stripes over his arms and on his face, I painted the Death Skull. White paint on his forehead, brows, eyes, and lips, letting the green show through on the edges to make it look like poorly applied makeup and not white skin. To finish up this orc, I sponged silver over the rattling grime of the weapons, and then it was time for the decals. A coat of gloss paint medium got the surfaces ready, and then I slid on the decals. I think this is the first time I've ever actually put decals on an orc, and it feels sort of wrong that they're space marine decals. This orc stole the banner, but he's not just waving around the symbol of the Ultramarines. He's simply recycling the fabric into an orky wah banner. I took some red paint, and in the scratchiest, messiest font I can make, I painted wah right over the Ultramarine Omega. Waste not, want not. The Death Skulls are really fun and offer some really great opportunities for custom conversion work, but all of these different orc characteristics fit inside of all orc armies. Even Nick's Blue Orcs, the Beach Boys. Nick's Orcs are pirate orcs who love guns and the color orange. That sounds like bad moons to me. I started with a Zenithal and gave him some buccaneer pants with dark red stripes. I glazed a bone contrast over these. I assumed the pants started out white. And after that was dry, I highlighted these stripes with red. It's fun to add a little something to a part of a model that was never meant to be fancy. But you know what is always fancy? That's right, our Patreon. The best way to support what we do, get extra episodes of EOB, your name on an EOB Templar Mini, and STLs for your wargaming table. I put black speed paint over his pirate boots and more tan over his shirt. For his quilted umpire armor, I used a red-brown contrast paint that I felt was decently piratical, then picked out his suspenders with black. Now for the good stuff, the weapons and armor. I was careful enough not to spill contrast paint onto the other parts of the model, so I base coated these with an orange ink, which I shaded with some watery rattling grime. Then a sponging of silver paint chips to show just how well cared for his orky weapons are. Now for the juice, the thing that makes this a Nick Orc. Blue skin. I don't know Nick's recipe, but I used Army Painter Beowulf Blue and then highlighted with a white paint, getting him all nice and highlighted. I went a little heavy with the blue. I could have thinned it down so I wouldn't have had to highlight quite as much, but then to give him a really nice icy complexion, I watered down some Army Painter Magic Blue contrast paint and glazed this right over top. With his smurfy skin all finished, I picked out his tongue, teeth, and eyes which really pop out of the cold skin. I felt like the tan contrast paint was not perfectly replicating the fabric Nick paint, so I bumped up the color a little with tan paint, and then he was ready to join the Beach Boys. I've painted a couple of Nick's blue orcs over the years, which Nick affectionately calls blorks. Actually, one of them is on my High Marshal Helbrecht base. And speaking of bases, it is time to get these bases finished. I want to give these orcs the home field advantage, fighting on properly orky infested ground. I glazed a super watery brown over the base to tint the zenithal into dust, and then I picked out all the exposed orky machine bits with a metallic paint. I did the same rattling grime silver sponging combo I did for all of the orky weapons, and then it was time for the secret weapon. Dirty down rust. I lathered this on, nothing works better for realistic rust, but I was a little too timid on my first pass, so I went back in and slobbered this all over the bases, letting the rust spill everywhere. I have painted a lot of things, and the thing I have painted the most different ways and tried the most stuff out on is definitely the orcs. They really are the perfect blank canvas, and I have learned a ton from painting these guys. The Goths are all about fighting. Most orc leaders, including Gazgul Thraka, have come from the Goths. And I feel like the scratchy complexion Sponging gives is perfect for them. The Bad Moons are more sophisticated orcs. These are orc collectors who spend all of their teeth on the biggest, shiniest, and loudest guns. Walking around in bright colors, it is impossible not to see them. The snake bites are more natural than the typical orc, and this leads to some fun painting opportunities and for them to really stand out on the battlefield. The blood axes are the commandos, and really fun to play with in Kill Team. It would be fun to have an army of actually competent orcs. The Death Skulls are my favorite orcs, and as thieves, they make the perfect clan for my Mad Max orcs. Thieving is in their nature. And Nick's Blorks also fit into the Orc clan cultures, Orcs who are a bit more refined and put together, who take the time to dip everything they can reach into orange paint. 
Let me know in the comments below which of these was your favorite orc, and just know that if you don't say Nick's blue orcs, he's gonna cry.